reference to natural history and the evolutionary biology of life on Earth, this question of the eidetic seems to arise after the reduction of natural selection to formative causation and formative causation, alluding to the process of morphic resonance, there is this hazy region where our very tool-based language uh, breaks down when trying to explain the origins of formative typologies in the macroevolutionary process of generic and species variation. Now, we have to understand that our limitations in representing a seamless causality is a direct result of the formative limitations of our linguistic faculty at this level of reductionism. Again, we have been using a tool-based system of grammar to represent all of this natural phenomena. So, essentially, we're using a vehicle which is survivalist in nature. Grammatical language is not a self-reflective or self-expressive instrument of our own biological awareness. It is a socio-communicational tool that is a product of natural selection itself and we can't hope to attain the original meaning and cause for biological evolution using languages that evolved as products of that system in order to aid the survival of our species. We can render the original meaning through description using grammatical language, but it requires knowledge of the original maps that produce that language and everything else in nature. Those maps are based on the language of eidetics, a language that has existed for billions of years, lay dormant in the collective unconscious of most species until the evolution of self-reflective consciousness in the early centuries of primitive humans. This period of eidetic awareness lasted for over a million years from the mid-Pleistocene era and reached its peak around 25,000 to 90,000 years ago. Before that time, the eidetics had remained in an unobservable state, essentially in the form of storage and genetic memory, which kept everything else in the system from crystals to single-celled organisms to insects and mammals in a state of progressive genetic variability. This was achieved by a pictorial induction of the survivalist mechanism within the racial memory of species. But it was merely storing and processing itself. It was not conscious or fully self-ingressed in any species until the tool-bearing proto-humans who had consciously mastered the eidetic image to constructing spatial representations and tools, symbols, and art in answering the question, what are eidetics, you have to be able to single out a particular spectrum of visual impressions. Eidetics aren't the visual images we see outside, neither are they the linguistic representations of experiences, but rather the residues of visual impressions in the form of somatic representations. In other words, they aren't arranged like empirical structures directed towards the outside, and they don't represent themselves through grammatical languages. The eidetics obey their own architecture and representation from the biology of the somatic organism, but gain their sustenance and photogenic content from the outside world. Now, this process of sustained impressionism, which eidetics acquire from the perceptual experience, is only exhibited in its conscious manifestation, but they existed as spatial archetypes of variation long before the evolution of psychic humans, before the evolution of color vision, before photoreceptors, and before photosynthesis. Photosynthesis represents the first major step in the complexification of eidetic evolution towards an interiorized and non-corporeal system because before it was expressing itself in the geometry of crystals and the chromatography of minerals. This was the time when eidetics had reached their most ordered form 
and express the most basic function of eidetic variation, the crystallization of complex inorganic chemistry. Chemosynthesis had basically reached a point of ramification that was so advanced it couldn't be compared to the same eidetic process that dominated for the first five billion years, which was the chemistry of stellar evolution. Crystals are the most ordered and variable chemical systems in the eidetics of prebiotic organization. Photosynthesis represents the internalization of the evolutionary vector emerging out of the darkness of caverns and volcanic geology to the use of light as a stereochemical catalyst upon crystalline structures which recognize sunlight, producing this photorefractive effect leading from chemosynthetic eidetics to photosynthetic eidetics. From that time onward, the eidetic dimension began the ascent from very dense corporeal constructions towards a more fluid membrane-based expression that could house its own light source. The natural historical laws of eidetic variation became interiorized and fully transcendental in the structures of human consciousness the pretension and retention of time, the representation of thing and space, the human imagination, and the intentionality of noetic and nomadic objects. These structures reflect the universal cosmogony of the eidetic mind in its need to make itself known to itself, and to allow for a much faster and more efficient means of varying its evolution of contents. These other dimensions now express themselves in the impressionism of the human eidetic psychology. For the first million years, it was of course more conscious, and it still is in the infantile stages of human development. It would appear then that nature is now regressing itself like it did during the Archean period of geological time going back into the cave of unconsciousness and darkness so that it may exude more variation. This was the requirement for mineralogical life. Crystals are very ordered systems, and they are the most ideal structures in the universe. But they do not have self-awareness, and they do not require light. So this is what we see happening now. The development of a new architecture, human regression into unconsciousness, and the building of an interface for a new consciousness. We are now at the very minimalistic stage of this development. The structural base is being created, and so, like early inorganic chemistry, we aren't seeing any of the gemstones or more vibrant eidetic variations that will come into fruition within the next 300 years. What we can expect to see in the future will be the completely polished concrescence of what we have seen as of very recent times, when it was first being drafted in art, architecture, and product design from the early 1900s into around the 1970s. A window had opened up during that short time, that is always prerequisite for any new evolutionary program. We are yet to see the full spectrum because civilization has only existed for 5,000 years and the human eidetic psychology had been hibernating for at least a million years before the evolution of language. With the logical structures of human consciousness in the noetic nomadic Eidetic has properly formatted the psychic realm in its own image, so to speak. So then, this archetype of the monolith we have realized is the original eidetic modulus, the ideal representation for the ingression of the eidetic object into proto-human creatures as they evolved into fully eidetic humans. It is the original attractor archetype and the typical of minimalism, the phenomenological epoch.
Dimension. 